Hi guys, it's Megan here. I am at the very last bits of pieces uh, before I'm all finished up with this haul tree in my entryway closet. Literally right here um, is my front door. And so this is the closet that you would see coming in to the entryway. There used to be a huge wall here coming into the entryway that I opened up and made my kitchen um, entryway here all together. And so I think I've come a long way in getting this to, um, I don't know, my style at least. Um, I do think that um, not everybody's going, it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. So if I ever resold, if I ever sold this house, this is something that can be, this entryway can be painted um, to lighten up an area, the area or do kind of more of like the farmhouse look. I did want to put a piece of wood trim here with a mirror behind it, but I, um, if, if I change my mind, I can really do that. Um, it's rather easy. I would just have to take off those brackets here that I put up here and put the mirror behind it, glue it really good, and then put the trim piece at the bottom of it. And then I would probably put um, those brackets below the mirror on the trim piece. Um, I will insert a picture here to kind of show you what I was going for. But I nixed that because uh, for one, I was having a hard time finding the right measurements. And uh, for two, I didn't want to spend any more money on this. Um, and I would have had to spend money on either a mirror can of spray paint, the mirror spray paint that there is to make it look like a faux mirror, or I would have had to buy a mirror um, to fit this area. And I do have an extra piece of wood that I could use, um, so that would have been great. But we're left with just having to do a coat of polyurethane on this, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, but first, I'm going to add all these little trim pieces around the bottom and then hopefully finish out the edging pieces that go along the floor here and um, get those all put back together. You'll all see it when um, I close out the video. I'll give a final reveal. I'm so excited. I'm glad I was able to do this and I hope that it gives you a little inspiration or ideas of ways to make your small closet spaces into kind of a really nice designer hall tree or really kind of just think outside the box and be creative when it comes to closets that can really be a space that you can utilize for visual visual storage, I guess I should want to call it. There's just so many ways that you can just recreate a closet space and make it kind of like a visual piece instead of just a door or taking the door off and just leaving the space open, plain Jane. So there's lots of just different great ways you can also recreate using old TV armoires. Um, there's so many people that just put them on their curb, put a free sign on it and hope for somebody to pick it up also on Facebook Marketplace. And there's just great ways to repurpose that, especially in a closet space like this. So that's what I've done. I had this, um, TV armor in my garage for a long period of time. It was super heavy, so I couldn't take it to the curb on for free. And I also just wanted to be able to utilize it for something else. I was going to utilize it in my garage as storage, but I just one day had an idea. Um, I don't know if I was scrolling on Pinterest and saw something or what, but I was like, that's what I'm going to do. So that's what we're doing. And I will as I'm done here, uh, going through here, I will go ahead and do a breakdown of all the things that this project cost me. So that way, if you are doing a project like this, you can kind of gear up to what that might cost you. But of course, everybody, everybody's situation is different. So it was pretty different than most people's. I want to go ahead and finish this project up so I can get this uh, video out to you guys 
and I hope you're having a good one. Let's get into finishing up this hall tree. Come along with me. If you haven't seen the other two videos prior to this, I will go ahead and link those below. I encourage you guys to take a look at those two videos. I essentially, I'm just going to do a recap of what those other two videos were and the process uh, to getting it to where it's at today. But simply, I had to get the old TV armor cut to size to fit into the closet and had to also take the old trim down in the doorway and get this all uh, new drywall tape mud up and then I also went through quite the staining process of the wood so getting that wood sanded down filling in wood filler in certain areas where needed and getting it all stained this is kind of just the process that I had in those other two videos so go ahead and check those out and so in the last video is where we are at here and getting this all painted and so today we're going to be working on just the final few steps now and getting this all ready to show <laughs> did have to take the door faces off on these drawers and I should have left them off because uh, I needed to kind of finish up some of the um, last bit of pieces around the back of this door the door frames and so they were kind of getting in the way at the end you'll see what I'm talking about here in the end but I used the old doorknobs that were on this as well and so I um, just soaked those in like a vinegar water I believe it was to kind of get it to kind of look like a old kind of rusty antique kind of look and so I am now just going to go ahead and get all the trim pieces up here all of these little wood pieces were from the old TV armoire here so all of this is just the same wood and I um, just had to cut it all down to size and I had to find a piece of wood that would kind of go back behind this um, drawer uh, kind of like a little piece that was just missing from when we took apart the TV armoire so I got it cut down to size sanded it painted it glued it into place and kind of did a little bit of caulking uh, or wood filler or what have you in the areas where needed but I am at the last bit of pieces and getting this all uh, put together and ready to show you guys um, I did end up using a polyurethane coat on this to I don't know just kind of make sure to seal it and make sure that the paint wouldn't come off because of so many staining processes and then just the light paint process I knew eventually like if we're sitting on it and stuff it would kind of wipe away um, sooner probably than I would rather like it to um, but I did want that aged look and having it that kind of wood exposed through the paint kind of have like that primitive vintage look um, but I went ahead and just put the uh, flat or matte uh, polyurethane on the top of everything in here. So that way it just has a little bit long lasting effect of I, what I, the look I was going for essentially. And so I suggest that you make sure to use the polyurethane in longer strokes and then just making sure you're getting the bubbles out of the polyurethane stain because it does have kind of like a bubble effect if you don't drag that out from my experience um, everybody has their own experience but that was my experience and that's my tip for today um, but this polyurethane didn't cost me anything because I did get it 
from under the sink where I got all my stains, gel stains, and um, this polyurethane hat. All right, so I'm getting ready to finish up this haul tree. I'm here really towards the end of everything, and I um, have to tape off this area and do a touch up of white paint. And then I have to um, take that tape off and then tape it so the white once it dries and touch up the black areas. And the reason why I'm going from white to black is because my paintbrush, I only have one paintbrush, I'm down to one paintbrush. Um, and it's a nice paintbrush and I don't want to uh, ruin it. So I am going to um, use the white first and then wash it, let it dry, and then go over with the black side of it and do the black paint. And then I have um, to show you here before I finish taping this off, I did the um, mud some of this area right here to kind of clean it up a little bit. I also had old paint when I was trying to just paint it and finish it off and then realized I didn't want to do that. I wanted to clean it up a little bit more. Um, so I just have to like clean this area up. And then down here, I have caulked this trim area. And then I um, had my son help me, had my son help me um, cut the trim that we had left over. We didn't have much trim left over. I thought I had more, but I feel like somehow it got thrown out, which I didn't want, but nonetheless, this is what I had left and made it work. So I have it here and then I have it on this side as well. So I did already um, just use some wood glue and put those up. I'll have to use some wood filler here because we had to use a cut down the middle of two pieces and because the old piece wood trim that a piece that I had had a huge hole in it from where an old cable wire went through it and so anyways I went ahead and caulked this area after I caulked this area and so it's not gonna be perfectly streamlined I tried to get it the best I could but we're working with what we have and then I do have some molding that I need to get put up here as well. I thought I had more wood molding, little trim pieces here, uh, but I feel like I um, have run out of that or thrown it out. I just have to go through my um, wood bin that I have and go through it a little bit better to see if I have some more. But at any rate, it will just go here and clean up these little edges here. Um, this is what was once here essentially. And so I don't want to have to go and spend any money on new because this is all older trim in my house and it's hard to find um, something to match without having to um, stain it and things like that to try to get it to match. So this is where we are at. I'm super excited to get this finished up. So let's go ahead and get all of this painted, prepped and painted.
going to take a look at the breakdown of cost. Everything essentially cost me under $65. I had to get corner round uh, for the corners of the inside of the doorway. I had to get mud, screws, wood glue, three one by threes that I got from my local Habitat for Humanity, some steel wool, and then I paid some labor costs for the cuts and the installation, but everything else I had on hand. I do think the total cost for under 65 bucks is great, especially because most haul trees cost anywhere new, anywhere from, you know, $60, depending on the quality, up to even like $2,500, as you could see in the pictures here that I kind of got some price points for you. I had a basket on hand that I repurposed. I got this from my local Goodwill outlet and I went ahead and stuck, stuck all of my kids and I's gloves and hats and scarves in here just to have it visually ready so in case anybody needs something they remember to grab it by looking at it. put my toddler's shoes in the bottom drawer so that he can easily access the drawer and we can just kind of grab and go or dump on the way into the house because I don't like shoes in the house and so I just think it was a great way to repurpose this drawer system here and make it a functional entryway closet. And right now I am putting some snow boots in here because it's that time of the year, but when the spring comes around, I will swap these out for rain boots and so that we can easily grab our rain boots if we're gonna go on a walk or go to the store or something. Might put little pegs on the left side for some keys and then maybe hook something to insert mail into so I can hide mail um, when we're coming in the door. But I wanted to give you guys a visual of what be the before and afters are looking like here. I'm so excited. I'm so happy about the results of this. What do you think? <laughs> 